Welcome to lesson two of everything I learned in photography school, where I'm currently sharing with you guys everything I learned through my undergrad and master's photography school education through 10 minute videos on this channel. In this lesson, we're talking all things mood boards because mood boards are one of the single most important ways to pitch your ideas to new clients, expand your inspiration for future shoots, and convey your inspiration to others like your models or your styling team. Whether you're making mood boards for your own inspiration or you're trying to pitch for that commercial client job, mood boards are so important because they give you, your client, your model, and or your styling team a visual representation of multiple forms of inspiration. It's no secret that platforms like Pinterest have given us a fast, new, and exciting way to make mood boards. If you have a Pinterest account, you've probably been making mood boards for a while now. If you don't have a Pinterest account and you're a photographer, I highly recommend signing up for a free account. Pinterest lets you expand upon ideas and other things you like by recommending similar things through your feed and search results. You can then pin things to specific boards and share with other people. While I don't necessarily recommend sharing a Pinterest board link directly with a client, I do recommend searching on Pinterest for inspiration, compiling your ideas there into a board, and then pulling those ideas from Pinterest to create a customized presentation board to send to your clients. I'll talk more about custom mood board creation a bit later in the video and why customizing your mood boards is so important, but first let's talk about the different types of mood boards. Depending on your personal photographic style, workflow, and where you draw inspiration from, you will create a different mood board for a client than say another photographer. Lots of clients request mood boards or theme presentations with an initial bid. That lets the client get an idea of what type of imagery you could create for them with the price that you're giving them. This being said, a really good customized mood board could win you the job over another photographer with a mediocre mood board or just a quote without a mood board presentation at all. Your mood board will depend on your shoot, team, what you think your client is looking for, and it could include a combination of imagery, sketches, collage work, etc. However, the more that you put on your mood board isn't necessarily always better, and it's good to divide a mood board into sections. For example, if you're sending out a mood board to a client, you may end up sending out a three or more page mood board broken up into different sections, maybe starting with overall photographic theme, then moving on to styling, lighting, model choices, etc. Whatever you feel you need on that mood board can maybe be broken up into a different section. This way you're able to give a clear representation of what you had in mind and not confuse your client. For example, there may be a picture of a lighting technique that you really like, but the styling is definitely not what you were thinking. It'd be good to put this picture in a lighting section of your mood board, and then you choose a styling picture which is what you were thinking and put that in a styling section. This way you avoid confusion, frustrating, or worrying your client. Your mood boards are always a great thing to have on your shoot day on your set. If you can, print it out and hang it up in the studio while you do your shoot. This way you always have your inspiration handy and you keep yourself on track. Be sure to keep your ideas consistent. This is where platforms like Pinterest can take us down a crazy rabbit hole. If you really find inspiration from something and you like it a lot, but it's not relevant to this specific shoot, that's okay. Save it for another shoot, pin it to another board, but delete it from this shoot. Don't have loads of different inspiration that don't go together at all, all put onto the same mood board. Especially when you're shooting commercially or sending it out to a client, you want to have your mood board stay completely consistent, especially if you're gonna be shooting products. Your client wants to know that if you're shooting one product to the next, your imagery and your work is gonna be a total consistent vibe across the board. And having a mood board of consistent inspiration will allow you to stay focused on what you're doing. If you already know you have a limited number of images you're going to be shooting for a client, you can even create a mood board for each specific final image. Once you have all the mood boards done, 
print them out or line them up next to each other and make sure that they're consistent from shot to shot, that your inspiration is staying consistent and you're gonna have the same vibe throughout your shoot. Having a mood board keeps everyone on the same page and lets your client know what type of imagery is going to be delivered to them. It also holds you and your team accountable to your client. When creating an initial mood board, your ideas are just beginning to come to life and you may end up discovering things that you didn't necessarily even think of, especially on platforms like Pinterest where inspiration runs wild. Be open to that. It's part of the planning process. Just group everything together and pare it back down after the second round of looking at it. You'll probably find that if you're inspired by a specific thing, you'll have a lot more consistency in your inspiration than you thought. Let's talk about the difference between artistic, personal, behind the scenes mood boards that you don't show anybody versus your client presentation mood board. I touched on this earlier, but a client may not always be exactly as artistically thinking as you. That's why they're hiring you. Therefore, if you send them a mood board that's full of every single piece of inspiration that you have, they're going to get overwhelmed and think that you're not going to deliver a consistent bit of imagery. This is why I think it's a good idea to send to your client a customized, well presented, very few image, but just enough to give them the overall idea presentation with any bit. Whereas you keep your full mood board inspiration to yourself and keep that going behind the scenes. Your mood board shouldn't necessarily be completely different from the one that you send to your client because you want to make sure you're delivering to your client what you said but your mood board could be an expansion of the few ideas or the overall look that you give to your client. Creating custom mood boards is a lot easier than you think, and now we have so many options to choose from. You could choose to create your own custom template that you create in Photoshop or InDesign where you place your inspiration onto, customize the name or the logo on the front, and send out to your clients that way. Or you could choose to use a program like Adobe Spark where you pick one of their customizable templates and start creating that way. The most important thing is to make sure that you have a concise presentation mood board that looks professional and is very specific to the client job that you want. Say you have a shoot coming up and you have your template ready to go, but you don't have a lot of time. You can easily place two to four images that best represent each section into the mood board and send that out. It'll only really take you a few minutes. This keeps you well organized and looking professional. It's great to have a template pre-done as a backup in case you're on a super tight schedule and you don't have a ton of time to spend creating a super customized mood board for your client because sometimes a good well-organized mood board looks a lot more professional than no mood board at all. This is my current template which I send out with bits if I'm on a super tight schedule and I don't have time to create a super customized mood board. I always have a custom title page and open with a general mood that I like. I then move on to my sections with lighting, styling, etc. Again, each job will vary which sections you need. I just pop in the images which I find inspirational and relevant to the shoot and I'm good to go. Everything is interchangeable so it works great for any client. You can also put the client name or logo on the opening page which I think is a really nice custom touch. Sections of a mood board will vary from job to job but could include some examples like overall mood, lighting, color themes, styling, model options, etc. Again, this will vary with your personal style and the job that you're bidding for. Just be careful with mood boards that you don't end up copying other people's work exactly, but instead draw inspiration from your mood board for your own unique creations. What you create from your inspiration makes you different. Copying someone else is easy. Being interesting and uniquely creative is what makes you an artist, and an artist people will want to hire. Don't be afraid to put some of your own imagery from past shoots on a mood board if a client told you that they like it. Let your portfolio and your past work really speak for itself in your intent and the style of the imagery that you plan to create. Overall, mood boards are an essential part of the artistic planning process. 
have fun, and keep it well organized for your clients, and you should score those big jobs you've been looking for. I hope this video has been helpful and you guys are able to learn a little bit more about mood boards today. I would love to see you all on Instagram, and you can follow me at Gabrielle Reddick for more in my everyday life and to see more of my work. As always, I would love to hear from you all in the comments below. Where do you get your inspiration from, and where do you find the best places to create mood boards? Also, if you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any new videos. I'm currently posting three videos a week on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday as part of my new series, Everything I Learned in Photography School in 10 Minutes. Until next time, peace. I've been waiting all my life.